Good evening all, and welcome. Before the video begins, I'd like to tell you about a new channel I found recently that I thought you'd find really interesting called The Darkest Secret, where you cover all kinds of strange and mysterious video topics that will leave you terrified and wanting more, no doubt. If you like my content, you will surely enjoy The Darkest Secret, so head over to their channel. If you like it, subscribe so you don't miss her scary videos. In the description of the video, I have left the link to said channel. But without further ado, it's time for us all to get comfortable, get our flashlight ready for the night shift, and let the darkness take control. I was a jail nurse for about three years, in a correctional facility that housed approximately 1,300 inmates. I loved the job, and would have stayed longer, but administration sucked. That's another story though. Anyway, I worked the night shift, and had some creepy stuff happen that just couldn't be rationally explained. I worked both booking and infirmary, but the majority of the incidents occurred in infirmary. Okay, I was there maybe a month, not a new nurse, but new to corrections. Anyone who has spent time at any jail will tell you that when those heavy doors slam shut, it's a very distinctive, definitive, loud sound. So to get into the infirmary, you have to have a key or be buzzed in by central control. I'm sitting at my desk, and I hear the metal door outside my office click, like someone from central has unlocked it, and it opens about halfway, and then just slammed shut. Now, in my office, there is a huge glass window so that nursing staff can see any inmates that are about to enter. So when the door slammed, I thought it was just the officers messing around, and I jumped up and went to the window, and no one was there. I called Central, and the officer that answered sounded like I had just woken him from sound sleep, and I said, ha ha, very funny. He had no idea what I was talking about, and I knew this officer, and I was surprised that he would go along with any type of prank, because, frankly? He was kind of a jerk with absolutely no sense of humour. So I thought it was some mechanical glitch. I sat down, and everything just changed. It felt colder, and I felt as if I were being watched. I was just all around uncomfortable. I took my stethoscope from around my neck, and put it on the desk, and left my office to go into the medical department. I stayed in medical for a few, talking to the staff in there, and then went back to my office. When I walked in, I went to grab my stethoscope off the desk to check an inmate, and it wasn't there. I looked on the desk, on the side underneath, and it wasn't there. I should mention that when I left my office, I did lock the door as per protocol, and I'm the only one on shift with the key. Now I think I'm going crazy, so I start looking everywhere and I can't find it. Now in my office there is a large closet that holds all supplies. This is also locked, with the key being on the set of keys that I carry. Later in the shift, I needed to go into the closet to get something. I really don't remember what. And sitting in the middle of the floor is my stethoscope. I picked it up and the heavy metal door outside my office clicks again, opens halfway and slams shut. I locked the closet, locked my office, and went out for a smoke. I was scared, shitless, but I had responsibilities and patience to look after, so I go back in, and I swear the whole atmosphere felt lighter. It was warmer, and I just felt more comfortable. After my shift, the central officers rewound the tapes for me, and I saw the doors just open and slam shut, with not a single person near them or in the hallway. I wish I could say that was the last time that happened, or that I got comfortable with it. I did not. 
because each time it happened, it seemed that the door slammed harder, and that uncomfortable feeling lasted longer and longer, and almost felt like I was being stalked. Things that went missing were found in different parts in the jail. My pen case in the women's wing, my med sheets in solitary central controls room, my portable blood pressure in the kitchen. And each and every time something of mine would show up in some other part of the jail, the officers and I would look at the tapes and see no one. Remember I said I felt like I was being stalked? Well, that's because all these things happened to me, but no other nurse that worked night shift. Not one other nurse who worked on my days off had any doors click open or slam shut. Their stuff didn't disappear and then reappear elsewhere either. It was just me. Every officer and every one of the medical staff who worked there well before I got there swore up and down that this type of incident never ever occurred before. It got to the point for me that I started just not staying in my office. I just got all the stuff I needed for my shift and sat at the office desk. I did that until I left there to get another job. And I haven't had anything like that happen again since. I was sitting outside my work having a smoke. 4am. Not a soul in sight. A man came up to me, asked if I had a spare cigarette. I politely declined. Normally this just elicits some grumbling, then they amble off. Not this time. Buddy decided to dig in his heels. He had all his earthly belongings on his back, and a gigantic glass bottle of vodka that he started swinging around. He also had the kind of eyes that would give a lion tamer the heebie-jeebies. Not an ideal combination in someone who's getting up in your unarmed face. You better give me a smoke. No, dude. Sorry. I said, give me a smoke. You don't know who you're dealing with. He starts to loom over me, getting a bit too far into my space bubble. I stood up, all five foot three inches of me. The only things I had going for me were steel toe cap boots and a really bitchy look. The man backed up a step and then came back even closer. He was directly in my way back to the door. He took my motion as a threat as he immediately ramped up his act. If you don't give me a cigarette, I'm going to end you. No one will find you. Now look me in the eyes, woman. I'm looking at you in the eyes. I replied firmly, planting my feet and giving him my best graveyard shift stare. Anyone who's worked night shifts will know what that stare is. He kept insisting. I looked him in the eye and I kept replying just as fast that I already was. And what was he going to do about it? Don't try me. I'll drag you by your hair to the bushes and then you'll see. Getting closer still and holding the vodka bottle up. This is when I started getting really loud. Get out of my face and back off. Get out of here now. In true predator fashion, he got all nervous at the sudden yelling. And while he kept threatening me with all sorts of heinous things, and was looking around quickly for any witnesses. This is when I knew I was in trouble if someone didn't come along. I cannot emphasize enough how creepy this guy was being. I've actually abbreviated most of what he said. But luckily my coworker finally heard the commotion and came barreling out already on the phone to the police. The man started threatening her as well, then realized who she was on the phone with and quickly walked away, slurring more insults as he went. The police came and I gave a detailed description, but they never found him. I sometimes wonder what would have happened if my co-worker hadn't come out when she did. I worked the night shift at a local McDonald's. I had to fill in for my friend Kiara, 
who called in sick. This night was probably one of the most terrifying nights I have ever worked. It was dead around 11pm. As I was asked by the manager to sweep the floors until a customer came in. One customer came in, and he looked a bit rough. He had a long, rusty beard, glasses, sandals, and just clothes that had stains on them. I go over to the register and say, Hello, can I get you anything? Yeah, I'll have a large coffee, please. I take his order and give him his coffee and tell him, have a wonderful night, sir. He smiles. I resume sweeping the floor again, as I see this man sitting a bit close to where I could be sweeping, which is usually under the tables and just around the floors. When I reached his table, he says, you're very beautiful. Thank you so much, I say, with a smile. Can I give you a ride home when you get off work? Oh, no, thank you. I have a ride home. He becomes the opposite of the nice man that I took the order from, to just pure rude. What's your schedule? I'm not allowed to give out that information. Sorry. He takes his coffee and goes back outside. The next night, after that, Kiara and I worked together, and my other guy friend Jack too. I told Kiara about the guy from the night before, and she gave me a weird facial expression. Jack comes over and says, Monica, is everything okay? I tell him about the guy from the night before, and he gave me a look of terror. What he said sent chills running down my spine. The man called the restaurant earlier and asked about you. My blood ran cold as I saw the same man walk back in. Kiara's face went pale and Jack's stomach dropped. My stomach turned in knots and I say, Hello, can I get you anything tonight? No, but can I take you home? Jack steps out and says, No, she ain't going anywhere with you. Get out before I call the cops. The manager got pissed off at Jack for leaving his position at the drive through window while Kiara was frying burgers, and Jack agreed to switch positions with me until the morning crew came in. The manager asked me to take the trash outside. I nervously said okay. Jack, on the other hand, was furious that the manager asked me to do it. Jack was nice enough to do it for me. I stayed by inside, and Jack comes in and pulls me into the janitor's closet and says, That guy was waiting for you in his truck with five other big guys in there. I felt sick to my stomach when he said that. Jack informs the manager, and like the asshole that she was, says, he's not gonna hurt anyone. He's harmless. Get back to work. The next morning, me and Jack worked together, and my co-worker Taylor informs me that the man has come back, and told him my schedule, and that he will wait for me to come back today. I was sick of it, until I saw him come in. Jack, being the good friend that he was, told him to get out of the restaurant and never return, or else he'd call the cops. Jack lost his job because of this, but to me, he was just looking out for me. I cried when Jack lost his job, because I knew Kira would be working alone without anyone else to protect us. But I never saw the man again after that. I quit my job at McDonald's, and so did Kiara. Me, Jack and Kiara, now live in the same apartment building and work at a grocery store. I don't know what could have happened to me if I took out the trash that night and not Jack. I'm just happy. I never saw that creep again. Years ago, I used to work as a security guard in an abandoned psych complex that is now a heritage listed site. At the time, there was a company trying to sell the land, so one others and myself were employed to run graveyard shift from 6pm to 6am, 
and ensure that kids didn't sneak and burn down the place and generally mess it up. One night around 2am, when it was quite dark, the other guard and myself did our hourly patrol. While he circled counterclockwise, I went through the center of four different buildings to check for holes in the fence. While I had my torch, I saw a young lady who couldn't have been more than 22 to 25 years old, and quite pretty, although a little disheveled. She approached me and said that she was trying to find some men who had taken something from her. Of course, being the only one around, I asked her if there was anything more I could do, including phoning the police to come by. She declined with a short smile and seemed pretty despondent. Figuring that she might try and hurt herself, I said that I was here if she needed help, but it was a dangerous area, so I would escort her out. At this point, she gave one of the most blood curdling screams I have ever heard, and tears streamed down her face, a quicker mood change, the likes of which I'd never seen. Taken aback, is the least of my feelings. She screamed, I'll find them, I'll find them, before sprinting behind one of the buildings. It took me half a second to gather myself, but I started after her. Now I seriously thought that A, she would harm herself or someone else, B, drugs are one hell of a thing, as she disappeared behind one of the buildings and not half a second later did my partner waltz out from behind that same building. He'd not seen anyone run past, nor heard a thing, and that scream was loud. Long story short, from here it turns out that this ward was functioning before any of the normal guidelines came into force, and it was obvious people there were treated worse than animals. Apparently, it was not unheard of for female psych patients to become pregnant, who knows from where, and subsequently, their babies were taken from them at birth. I quit the next day, as did my partner. Nightclubs for me, thanks. In college, I was a late afternoon shift, from 3pm to 11pm security guard at a chemical factory on Sunday. I don't know what kind of chemicals they made, but it was comprised of three buildings, and whose prior use was just an orange juice factory. It was cool, and the guy who would replace me at 11 was this big 6 foot 3 guy. And he would sometimes get dropped off early, and we would just chill and talk. Well, I had to walk to the property, at 10.30pm. Every time I walked, I had no problems. Here's the thing. Of the three buildings, two were for actually mixing, heating and emulsification, and one building had administrative offices. That administrative office was always closed since it was the weekend. Well, one time, this guy gets dropped off at 10.15, and he decides to walk with me at 10.30. So the administrative building is last, and we're walking towards and everything is off. So we circle the building, and as we're walking back, the office light turns on. This was the first time I'd ever seen this, since no one is supposed to be there. I pull out my keys and start walking towards the building to enter, and see if someone is inside. At this point, the guy looks at me, grabs my arm and says, Don't go in there, just leave it. I turn and look at him, and his face looks dead serious. He's looking right at me like he's seen a ghost. You've got to realize I'm 19 years old, still a kid inside really, and not afraid of anything. But looking at his face made me nope the hell out of there. When we got back to the guard shack, he told me that once on his walks at around 3am, the same thing happened. He went in and the office felt really cold. He turned off the light and as he left the building, it turned on again. He re-enters as he's about to turn it off and he said something pushes him from behind. 
Immediately he turns around and exits the building and tells me he'll never step foot in it again. I talked to one of the old workers there about it, and he said that when the place was a juice factory, the building housed a larger juicer and someone had an accident and died. Don't know if it's true, but the old worker told me he would never go in that building at night either. A few weeks later, I quit, so that I would never have to deal with that again. I've applied for many jobs, because I'm the legal age for working as I'm in high school. I am in need of money, and need to help out my family. So at this point, I would take any job. Five jobs accepted me. So I decided to do a trial at my first job. That was quick enough to accept, which was McDonald's. I need to say that the staff and the manager are all nice, and my friend works there, which is a total bonus. The only downfall working there was probably the customers, which is something my friend agreed with. But anyway, I didn't know what to pick for shifts, or even if I wanted the job. So I asked for a practice shift. My manager happily agreed and let me choose my times. Instead of a day shift, I chose night, which was a bad decision, but hey, I needed to see what it was like working there. So this meant it would be easy since it's night, right? I was terribly wrong on that. I got ready in my friend's uniform that she let me borrow and she even drove me there. I'll be honest, the McDonald's was rather sketchy. When I say sketchy, I mean there are so many alcoholics and druggies around, and upon arrival it didn't feel right. During the car ride, I had a gut feeling it wasn't going to be a good shift, but my friend kept reassuring me that it would be fine. She dropped me off at the bus stop, which was five minutes from my workplace, and said she would pick me up at 12 a.m. It was 10 p.m., so my practice shift only lasted two hours. I agreed and said for her to pick me up at the same spot she dropped me off. As she sped off, I merely watched as her car shrunk into the distance. After I saw it was gone, I started making my walk towards McDonald's. But while walking, I heard footsteps behind me. I didn't think much of it because it was a normal thing. The person was probably just walking to their car or McDonald's or even the shops, but I had a gut feeling. I felt like I was being watched and I stopped for a second. The footsteps stopped with mine and I looked behind me to see a guy around his mid forties just dying me off. I got weirded out as he just smiled at me and breathed heavily. He was taller than me and looked rather stronger and bigger. He was around what looked to be a few meters away, and I quickly looked away and ran off to my workplace. There were only three people working, my manager and my male friend. It was 10.30 PM and I had already had a share of drunken rude people filling the orders up. One even tried hitting on me but he quickly left after my friend showed up to help. He helped me out with most things and I felt rather safe with him. He was an acquaintance of mine, but we soon grew into best friends. After I was done taking some drunk guy's order, my friend pulled me aside and asked if I knew the guy outside. I was confused at what he meant and at first I thought he was joking around until he pointed at the right window. My mouth went dry and my face dropped. It was the same old guy that was following me before work. I didn't tell him that because I was an idiot. I just laughed a bit and said it was no big deal. He shrugged it off and went back to the kitchen. 11 PM hit and no more customers were present and the same guy would not stop staring at me. At that point, I held my head down and begged, hoping he wouldn't come in. I felt his beady eyes run up and down my body. It was gross. It made me feel dirty. 
He'd been there since the start of my shift. I started to panic a bit, as I was absolutely begging for him not to come in. In the middle of my thoughts, I heard something. My heart stopped, as it was the door opening. The creepy guy slowly walked towards my counter, eyeing my whole body until he was right in front of me, heavily breathing and drooling almost. His breath reeked like alcohol and cigarettes. He had a musky scent that, to be honest, nearly made me vomit. My red flag was high as I carried on with my nice act. He wouldn't stop staring at me. I glanced at my friend, who was busy in the kitchen, and I turned my attention back to the guy. No matter what I asked, he was silent for a whole five minutes. And that went on until he eventually said something. Beautiful skin. So young. Short black hair. Such a nice complexion you have. Before I could even speak or try to call someone over, I wasn't prepared for what happened. The old guy launched towards me and tried entering the counterpart, which was the same part I was working at. He looked at me like I was a piece of meat. Trying to climb over the counter wasn't easy for him though, eventually trying to grab me and getting stuck midway, and I tried backing up. To my luck, I slipped and landed on my ass. I tried my best crawling away, hoping he wouldn't pass through. I was of course rather startled, and afraid to the point where I couldn't utter a word. My friend dropped what he was doing as he screamed for my manager to come over. My manager quickly showed up, which made the old guy get back up to flee. My friend quickly ran to my aid, took me into the back room, which is what my manager told him to do in order to calm me down and to call the cops. I glanced at my friend as he looked pale and rather puzzled, like he saw a ghost. My manager waited at the counter for the cops and my friend quickly explained who the guy was. It turned out the guy was known for creeping on the female staff members while they worked. He would take pictures, ask for their number, offer alcohol and even documented what they looked like. He was already banned from entering the place or even being near it. The cops were very aware of who he was due to his disturbing predatory behavior in the past. And apparently he even sexually assaulted one of the girls after their shift. After the whole investigation and getting questioned, it was 1am and I was free to go. My friend, the one that drove me, was made of my other friend, the one who worked with me. And while I got questioned and was on my way home, my friend held my hand and kept reassuring me everything would be fine. Safe to say that I won't ever go back there again and I don't trust any night shifts. I have plans of working at a different fast food establishment now. I have been working as a guard for a few months at one site, and I've noticed a series of odd occurrences since my first day. The layout of my patrol is a two part office building. One side is the north side, using only the first floor for offices, the second floor and the first floor for storage for space chairs and cubicle walls. The other side, south side, is abandoned, when the company housed in that section moved to a new location, both floors being filled with cubicles, chairs, desks and posters dating from 2013. No files or personal property are in the south section, but the lights don't work properly due to weather damage in 2016. When I started, I patrolled the bottom of the north offices, which is mostly barren aside from a tornado shelter, cubicle walls stored against a wall and the janitor supply room. Down on this floor, I have felt my jacket grabbed more than once while checking the area. The second floor with the office is more active than the bottom floor. The chairs move and roll into the hallway and the sound of filing cabinets slams shut. But when I check to see if anyone is around, I find some half open papers on the floor. The south building is the worst one. The first day I did a patrol, I had chairs 
not desk one with wheels, move positions more than once. And while I'd like to blame my co-workers, only two people have key cards to that building. Security and maintenance. And when I'm on the top floor, I've heard office doors slam shut. And when I investigate to find the doors, I will routinely hear footsteps upstairs. My co-workers have claimed to hear voices and seen shadows. And the closest thing I've had happen besides the sound was a flashlight. New batteries that I replaced the day before, constantly flickering on the bottom floor of the south building, and returning to normal once I leave. Now I will be trying to investigate again. I want to take a digital recorder and see what happens. Or do you think it was just a hardware issue? I'm going to make sure that I find out. This happened when I was 16. In high school, I'm working my first part time job at a fast food restaurant located right off the highway. And it wasn't uncommon to get a lot of crazy customers. I arrived at work one day and was surprised to see that my schedule for the week had changed, giving me a graveyard shift on a Friday night. The thought of being at this place overnight gave me the creeps and thought my manager was insane for making the youngest employee take night shift. But it wasn't a school night. And I didn't want to seem like a baby. So I accepted the shift. When the night came, it was just me and another co worker who was a larger man and very friendly. So I felt more safe with him there. Before leaving, my manager gave me the rundown on how the night shift was supposed to go. At 11pm, I was to lock the doors and we would be only taking drive through orders. But on this particular night, one of the main doors had been broken and wouldn't lock properly. If anyone comes in, tell them they can't be in the lobby and to order through the drive through. After these words of wisdom, my manager went home to the comfort of his bed and I started my long night. Being slightly paranoid and not used to the new shift, every noise I heard from outside made me jump. A few times some customers came in through the unlocked door, but quickly and politely left after asking them to use the drive through. When it reached about 1am, I was in the back of the store organizing boxes, when I heard the slam of the heavy doors close. I ran to the front to tell whoever it was to get out, but saw no one. I walked into the lobby and looked around but couldn't see anyone there. Did you hear someone come in? I asked my co worker, as he also came to investigate. Maybe they left. I'll check the bathroom to be safe. He said, as he opened the men's bathroom and quickly came back out. No one here. You should check the girls. I agreed and opened the door to the ladies room. At first I didn't see anything. So I called out. Is anyone in here? No response. To double check, I took a few steps into the bathroom. And at this time I was able to see some feet behind a stall. The stall door was wide open. And as I got closer, I was able to see inside. My stomach instantly sank. I caught eyes with a woman with long tangled brown hair crouched next to the toilet with a needle in her arm. She jumped out of surprise and ripped the needle out of her arm, squirting blood all over the floor. She raised the needle over her head and started to move towards me. I screamed as fast as I could and ran out the bathroom past my co worker. I ripped around just in time to see her run out the door. My heart was racing as I was scared to death and I ended up going home right after. I quit the very next day. My brother used to work the graveyard shift at a grocery store. Usually there were three employees during the shift. Everyone started at 9.30pm except for my brother. He started at 3am. I remember him telling me creepy stories that would happen there. One time a guy got robbed while walking to the store entrance from the parking lot. 
Another time, someone was throwing out trash and saw a homeless guy sleeping by it. One time, my brother was on break, sitting in his car, and saw a guy looking in cars. There's just so many stories he shared with me. The most scary for him is the one he experienced two years ago before he resigned, as he got another better paying job. He had just parked his car, and as usual, he always looked around before getting down. He didn't see anyone and decided to get down. He started walking up to the store when he heard footsteps behind him. He looked, and he sees a guy wearing all black. The guy has an oversized jacket and a hoodie on. My brother is walking at a normal pace, and this guy is speed walking. My brother starts walking faster, and puts his hand into his pocket, where he has a box cutter utility knife. As he is approaching the entrance, he prays to God that someone opens the door fast, as sometimes he'd have to wait about 10 minutes before the other employees would open it. They were jerks. Anyway, as he turned the corner, he sees an employee smoking a cigarette in front of the store. When the creep turns the corner and sees the other guy, he immediately turns around and walks back to where he came from. The other employee asked my brother if he was following him, my brother replied in the affirmative, and that if it wasn't for him being outside, he would have had to have fought the guy. My brother is the most respectful and hard worker I know, but he always tells me that he was not going to go out without a fight. I would always worry for him because of all the stories he told me. A lot of people would even quit because they didn't want to be a victim of those guys. Some refused to take out the trash alone. I feel like my brother got lucky that night. Even he feels that way. He said in all the 10 years he worked there, he never saw an employee outside. He would always have to wait a couple of minutes knocking on the glass, call the store for someone to open the door. And sometimes he'd even see an employee standing a few feet from him stocking the shelves, and they would just ignore him. For all you graveyard workers, be aware of your surroundings. I worked as a CNA at a local nursing home that was on the edge of town, a country-like setting. I worked the night shift. It was easier than day, and the nurses and assistants got along well. I was a baby at only 19, we would take turns running up the highway about five miles to a 24 hour convenience store, grab snacks and go back. I would often volunteer to go. My apartment was right behind the store and I knew the clerk and I enjoyed the ride being away for a minute, even if it was 3 a.m. This was the 90s and for some reason I felt that it was safer than it is now, as you will most likely not find me out after dark alone now. While at the store, I notice a man in a car looking at me. He absolutely gave me creeps at first glance, that gut feeling of something being wrong. I go inside and pick out everything and return to the car. The guy is driving around the parking lot and pulls out before me. But as I get up to the highway a bit, as it's a straight shot from the nursing home to the store, he pulls over to the side and gets behind me once I pass. I am completely aware of him. I know he's following me, and I have no cell phone with me. I get back to the nursing home, which has good lighting, and pull up to the front door. The guy has just turned in behind me and I'm freaking out. I just want to get inside. We keep the doors locked, but a rug was in the front door for me. I run to the door, but as I stop to look at what this guy's doing, I look just in time to see this guy pull under a light and jump out. His pants are down, ready for him to expose himself to me. I was so upset by that brief encounter, I went into the bathroom and cried. I couldn't tell anyone right away for some reason. Then I got to thinking about him being outside when the smokers go. So I told everyone, I don't think we even called the police. 
I really wish I would have. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. I do hope that you enjoyed tonight's video. And well done for making it to the end. I just have a little secret request for you all, all of those of you who listen to the very end. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you might have remembered that my wife runs her very own channel. Now, she's been away from her a while because we moved house, we've had to furnish the house, we have a baby. It's been very stressful and we've only started to get back into a routine. Point being, she's on the verge of relaunching in the next few weeks uh, and it's her birthday tomorrow. So I'm gonna leave the link to her channel in the description and if you guys would like to just go on her video, doesn't really matter which one, just any video and just wish her a happy birthday. Uh, I think that'd be pretty nice because she'll get notified on her phone all these happy birthday messages and it'd be pretty awesome. So yeah, um, if you guys want to do that, feel free. It'd be pretty sweet. But if you don't want to, that's cool too. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons who really help with the running of the channel. It really does mean a lot. And yeah, if you'd like your name on screen at the end of every episode, as well as some awesome perks, you can find the info in the description. I'm sorry if you can hear Pandora babbling in the background. She's awake, her nap wasn't as long as it should have been today. But there you go, these things happen. <laughs> there she goes. Alright guys, well for now I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.